Hi everyone. I know it's been a while since I've recorded. My family has been busy moving and getting settled into our new house. This is my fourth time attempting to record because apparently, even though we moved only 10 minutes away, <laughs> we're far enough out that my internet lags a bit. And in my previous attempts, Toward the end of my video, my mouth um, wasn't matching the words that you were hearing. It's kind of frustrating. So I'm going to try again today and pray that I can get through without any nasty lagging. Today, um, our community lays to rest an incredible woman and I say the community lays to rest an incredible woman because her effect, her inspiration, her light reached so far. She just, she inspired everyone she met. And I'm, I'm telling you that she never met a stranger and everyone who met her um, immediately loved her. This morning, as the family um, prepares for her funeral, I think it's, I know this is kind of weird, but all morning on my mind, I've had that 60s song in my mind. Um, I love the flower girl. I love the flower girl. Da -da -na 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 if you're old enough, you might know which song I'm talking about. Um, I I just feel like she's, um, that song describes her. She would not want us to um, be sad today, but to be super thrilled, <laughs> super thrilled that she is a uh, closer to the Lord than ever, and free of pain. Um, I have to tell you, I I'm not going to pretend like we were best friends, because we weren't. <laughs> we were neighbors a long time ago, and um, she just had such an impact on my life during that short time that we were across the street from each other. And um, that has continued through the years, just uh, watching her courageously uh, battle this cancer um, to try to stick around as long as possible to, for her children and her husband and um, to continue to just surround, to wrap others in love and encouragement and hope and faith. One of the things, um, she kept a blog uh, to kind of keep us all uh, posted as to how things were going. And I was so touched and so impressed, not only by her positivity, but her absolute willingness and uh, even more than willingness, her desire to um, not waste a minute of that suffering when she would get ready to go for another grueling cancer treatment, instead of asking all of us for prayers, she would, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble keeping it together. My voice is cracking a bit. She would ask others, she'd put the word out there, hey, I'm going in for this treatment and I want your intentions. I'm not going to waste a minute of this suffering. I want to offer it up for all of you. And that just kind of wraps up the kind of person that she was. So um, today we mourn for loss of her. I think we're all challenged to continue to take the light that she shared with us and go out and spread it and um, to celebrate, to celebrate her 
victory. She has kept the faith. She has run the race. And uh, I know that now she is receiving her reward. So we need to be super happy about that. <laughs> super happy. Um, Elise would often say, God's got this. God's got this. And before I move on to a story about God's got this, I, I ask you all to please um, continue to keep um, her family in your prayers. Um, she has several children from ranging from ages six to I think 15 or 16 and um, a wonderful husband and parents and brothers and sisters-in-law and nieces and nephews uh, who you know are just at a tremendous loss right now so I ask you to pray for them for peace and just to be filled filled and surrounded by the grace of God okay so I wanted to share this God God's got this story that has happened or been happening in my own life uh, I, as you know, I told you a while ago that back in January of last year, I felt that God was just stripping uh, things away from me, saying, you don't need that anymore, you don't need that anymore, you know, you need to focus more on me, I'm all that you need. And I believe that he asked me to give up my job and to put my house for sale and to completely trust that he was going to guide us to something better, that he was going to take care of us. And I'm telling you, it was really scary, but I knew that I had to answer his call and I had to step out in faith. And the words that I used um, when I told you this story before was, I felt God was asking me to jump and that he would catch me, but that I had to jump first. What I don't think I told you is that about a month later, I ran into this nun <laughs> and she asked me how she could help me. And I said, I don't know, sister, how you could help me. But and so I found myself talking with her and I told her, that, um, you know, my whole life was about to change, that God had asked me to jump and that I jumped and that it's a little scary. And she said, wait right here, I have something for you. And she left and she came back with a little piece of paper that had been highlighted and it had been taped to her bedroom wall. And it was the story um, it, by Henry Nuon. I don't know if I'm saying his, um, name correctly, but about God being the catcher and uh, me, I guess in that story, being the trapeze artist. And basically it, it ends by saying, you know, just stretch out your arms, um, trust, trust, trust in the catcher and jump. Don't be afraid to jump. So for me, that was confirmation that I was doing what God had asked me to do. Well, we, after a long haul, lots of difficulties, we are finally settled in a beautiful, uh, smaller home with a smaller note. And um, it's, it's lovely. It's all brand new. I never thought I would have a brand new home. Uh, but the best part is that it cuts our monthly note, and that's going to be very helpful in, um, you know, keeping our son in school and preparing for college and the future. And uh, so that has been such a blessing. Uh, I'm just so grateful for. Well, the other part of that was uh, me not having a job. And I would really, really love excuse me, to um, 
be a stay-at-home mom and just, you know, make the lunches and have cookies ready when they get home from work and school. And I've never really, other than the summers, had an opportunity to do that. And I, I've really enjoyed these few weeks <laughs> getting settled in the new home where I can do that. Anyway, um, a job opportunity just basically fell out of the sky <laughs> into my lap um, just a few days ago. And again, like a whirlwind, um, it's fallen into place. I went to interview for a public school job. It's a temporary job, but it's teaching fifth grade English. And if there's anything I'm passionate about um, other than religion, it's about English. I love playing with words and I love the written word. Um, so it was just the right age, the right location, the right subject matter. Anyway, I went to interview and this is a public school and I thought I had done fairly well through the interview and then the last question they asked me why I wanted to interview for the job. <laughs> and I said, well, if you want to know the truth, and one of the ladies interviewing me said, of course, we want to hear the truth. I said, well, for me, this is a God thing. And I went on to elaborate. Well, one of the ladies seemed like she was really interested in my story, and the other one seemed as though she was getting a little bored. <laughs> so I knew I had to wrap it up. Anyway, I walked away feeling good that the interview had gone well, that I was honest about who I am and about my faith, but I was fairly sure that I had just balloon the interview if you know what I mean. I, I was prepared for the we're sorry call <laughs> and I was okay with that. Well guess what? After picking up my son from school on the way home I get a, a phone call on through my car and they offered me the job. So I, I had been praying about this. God what do you want me to do? I assumed that when he asked me to leave the last job teaching at a Catholic school that perhaps he didn't want me to teach anymore. I thought maybe I would be in a different form of ministry or vocation and uh, so this totally caught me by surprise. Anyway, with the whole COVID thing and the mask and I don't know whether to be terrified or excited. <laughs> But since I do believe that, uh, since it just dropped into my lap and things have fallen into place, that this must be where God wants me to be right now. And um, the wonderful news is that, um, you know, I was concerned about myself and my children not having health insurance, and God has taken care of that. I was concerned about not having a job. And God has taken care of this. So in celebration and in memory and in love of Elise, um, I just want to remind you today that whatever it is you're going through, God is worthy of your trust. God has got this. You just need to believe. You just need to believe that he loves you he wants the best for you, and God's got this. So you have a wonderful day. Please pray for my friend and her family, and let us end with prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.